Hello, my name is Moritz Schullerich. I'm a professor of economics at Sciences Po in Paris and the University of Bonn. And today I'm going to talk with you about wealth inequality. Why is wealth so much more unequally distributed than income? That's a question that has occupied my research and the research of many others in the last few years. Traditionally, economists would think about the wealth distribution more or less as an appendix to the income distribution. So people get different incomes, some get more, some, are, some get less, and then they save a certain portion of their income, and the savings then constitute their wealth position, their savings. What happens, however, when we look at the data is that we can see very clearly that, say, that wealth is much more unequally distributed than income. So something else is likely to play a role than just income differences in society for explaining the, la the large discrepancy in wealth that we see. Some have huge yachts and, and, and big houses and, and others struggle to get by or have barely any savings to um, make, it over a, make it over a particularly cold winter or survive um, economically when they lose their job. What is, that? what is that thing that comes between the income distribution and the wealth distribution? Recent research, and including mine, has focused on the role of different portfolios. What does that mean? It means that people do not save in the same assets. They do not do the same things with, this, with their savings. Some put it in the bank, others buy a house, and third ones go into the equity market. Now, these different investments carry different types of risks and different kinds of returns. So, depending on how many, what your returns are on the savings that you've, um, that you've made, the wealth distribution can change through the fact that on these different portfolios that households have, you know, households get different rates of return. Uh, if we bring these ideas to the data that the difference, differences in portfolio allocation, differences in savings and portfolio heterogeneity explain um, a large part of the wealth distribution and the changes in the wealth distribution that we see in the data, the results look pretty promising. In a study that we've done for the US, we could show that the large swings in the wealth distribution in post-World War II uh, in the US are not due to changes in savings behavior or changes in income. They're mostly due to asset prices and changes in wealth driven by the role of asset prices in changing uh, portfolios. Simpl let me give you a simple example. Um, we all know that in the past 30 or 40 years, the housing market has been uh, on fire in many countries. People who own houses 30 years ago have become considerably richer, at least on paper, as their houses have become more valuable. Similar things you can observe in the stock market. The stock market tripled, quadrupled uh, alone in the, last, in the last decade. Whoever invested in stocks in 2010 is considerably richer now than she or he was 10 years ago. However, if you put your money in the bank, given the low interest rates that were prevalent in the world economy, your money would not have uh, gained a lot in, in, in value a lot. So you'd save your initial savings decision where to put your money will have considerable consequences down the road for your wealth position. And that is what we see across the world in, in, the, in the portfolios of rich households. They are dominantly invested in equities and whereas the middle class is dominantly invested in housing. And if you look at the bottom 50% of the population, they typically have very little net wealth, but if anything, it's invested in, in, uh, in savings accounts. That opens up an interesting question. First of all, two interesting questions. First of all, why do we see these pronounced differences in portfolio allocation? Why do some households save in equity and why do some other households save in housing? And, um, again, others in, in, in bank accounts. And, and, and um, also the, the question, what role then do different valuations of these assets play over time in explaining, the, in explaining trends in wealth inequality? So let me start with the first one. The answer to the first question is very much one that uh, researchers are fascinated by at the moment and we don't have a good answer. But there is at least some idea that households at the top of the distribution save in equity and, and, and invest in the stock market with high returns because they can afford to take the risks. Because an investment in the stock market is risky, the markets can fluctuate quite a lot, 
So whenever, um, for example, you know, people, an economy goes into recession, the stock market would typically fall a lot. And you need to be able as a household to uh, bear that risk. If you a household that's maybe you know not not very rich, or rather a low a low income household, you might simply not be able to take that risk that when the stock market uh, goes down and the economy goes into recession, that the same time that you lose your potentially lose your job, your savings also lose in value quite a lot. So there is an advantage of being wealthy to start with to take risk. Economists would say that maybe there is a point that risk aversion or the willingness to take risks is correlated with your income. The other point that um, could play a role here is that households that are in the lower income, low, low, lower half of the income distribution simply have a larger risk to actually lose their job, which would also argue in favor of them choosing safer portfolios. These points together raise a rather disquieting and rather uh, problematic um, potentiality that is or potential that is built into our economies, which is that households that um, have high risk of job loss and potentially low income households are choosing safer portfolios, which also have a lower financial return, whereas risk house, rich households can afford to uh, choose risky and high return portfolios simply because um, these households can afford to take the risk. And through the channel of the wealth distribution, these differences then would perpetuate as low income households would potentially have low returns in the long run, whereas rich households would continue to get um, high returns and making the wealth distribution more unequal over time. Um, these examples um, are borne out in, in data, as I mentioned, for the US and other economies uh, for the post-World War II period, but we're still very much at the infancy of this research. Um, the, the differences in portfolio, the importance of asset prices and capital gains for changes in the wealth distribution and um, the allocation of, um, of uh, savings into different asset classes are central questions for household finances, for, uh, for our wealth, for our savings and for our well-being, but we don't understand them very well. So over the past decade, there's been a fascinating research agenda that has opened up and uh, I look forward to uh, producing more research in that, in that respect. <laughs>